the best Korean skincare 2023. Well, hey guys, as promised in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the best Korean skincare products I discovered throughout 2023. In no particular order, number one is the good old vegan rice milk cream. This came to me in one of my Korean beauty advent calendars that I unboxed for you all at the end of 2022. I love those calendars because I always discover new and exciting products, new brands, uh, things I never would have you know, noticed or come across my radar. This moisturizer is really no nonsense. I think that's one of the reasons why I like it the most. It's a fragrance-free cream that's lightweight, but deeply hydrating. It has a very simple ingredient list. It has soy milk in it, which may have some proteins in it that are hydrating. Soy applied to the skin shows promise for a variety of anti-aging benefits, uh, depending on the bioavailability of certain compounds called isoflavones. There is evidence that these ingredients applied topically can have benefits in the realm of improving moisture retention, reducing inflammation, and potentially improving the visible signs of skin aging. Now, one area where a lot of people run into issues when it comes to choosing skincare in this day and age is that niacinamide, an ingredient I love and adore, is pretty much in everything, and that's great unless it's not. And for those of you who do not tolerate niacinamide, it actually can be very challenging to find skincare products that don't have niacinamide. This moisturizer is for those of you who do not tolerate niacinamide because it has no niacinamide. Um, I tried actually several moisturizers from this brand after discovering this one. Um, I wanted to try out what else this brand had to offer and everything else that I've tried from them has been really good. Like I tried an apricot facial moisturizer that was free of fragrance, very rich, very hydrating, but I still go back to this one because it's very simple and I think it's one that a variety of skin types will get along well with. Oily, acne prone, dry, sensitive, um, rosacea. It's just a very basic, no-nonsense facial moisturizer. I think it's a great option if you are dealing with a lot of irritation related to skincare products and you're really trying to pare down your routine to just the bare necessities of cleanser, moisturizer, and sunscreen. For example, if you are doing a skincare reset to try and cut out excess noise from potentially irritating products that are aggravating your skin, this would be a good facial moisturizer to, to include in that type of routine. Very simple ingredient list, yet effective and a pleasure to use. Number two is a cleanser I discovered this year. And honestly, I think a lot of what I liked about this particular cleanser is not only its efficacy, but the sensory experience of using it because the overall texture I found very pleasurable to use. A lot of what motivates people to continue with a skincare product does come down to the experience, the feelings that they have around using it. So this cleanser, the Isn't Tree Yam Root Cleanser, oh my goodness, it's a fragrance-free, very mild, milky, silky cleanser that feels very slippery and like it's, it's nourishing your skin barrier. It feels like it is very gently and precisely removing dirt, impurities, from the skin surface, but depositing behind nourishing, hydrating love for the skin barrier. It's super mild. A great option actually, if you are someone who has very sensitive skin, rosacea, or you're developing a lot of irritation from something, you know you need to cleanse, but you know it's a slippery slope with cleansers and that you need cleansing to remove impurities from the skin surface that will further aggravate dryness, irritation, and skin problems. But you also don't want a cleanser that's gonna to be too harsh, strip skin's moisture barrier. You don't want a cleanser that's gonna burn and sting when you apply it to your sensitive skin. This is a great option. Like I said, it has this kind of slippery feel to it, which you might not actually like. Um, it's something I enjoyed using and um, really like a lot myself, but you may not care for that. In addition to rice extract, this has yam root extract, which I think may impart some of that slippery feel to it. Now, root extracts are rich in anti-inflammatory compounds as well as humectants. You will encounter a lot of you will encounter a lot of different root extracts if you get into Korean and skincare. And my experience using products over the years, I find that I get along really well with different types of root extracts. I really see that they deliver a nice bang of hydration, they're soothing, and they impart 
a very pleasurable texture to things that I find enjoyable in the long run. This also has oatmeal extract. Now, oat extracts, very good for the skin, very good for eczema prone skin as well. Uh, oat is rich in humectants as well as anti-inflammatory compounds. Product number three is not really a skincare product per se, but rather, I guess we could say a scalp care product. So yeah, that's skin, but it's a shampoo. So, you know, kind of in the territory of hair care. CH6 Ginger Beer Anti-Hair Loss Shampoo. Now, anti-hair loss, that is a bit of a whoa, what are you talking about kind of statement there. This product has ingredients in it that are actually beneficial for scalp health, may help cut down on inflammation, and that may support a healthy hair follicle, which could be beneficial for people who have a tendency towards miniaturization of the hair follicle, AKA androgenetic alopecia. Some of the ingredients in this may also be beneficial for those of you who deal with dandruff, flakes, AKA seborrheic dermatitis. And the formula overall is very mild. It's not a harsh shampoo. And a few properties about it beyond the ingredients that I really like are that it has a good uh, lathering ability. So it's easy to get a good lather all over the surface of the scalp without using too much shampoo. And it also rinses out of the hair really easily. Now, as far as the ingredients in this shampoo, it has um, salicylic acid. It also has niacinamide. Now, admittedly, the percentages of these ingredients in this shampoo are on the low side compared to what you would find in a medicated shampoo with salicylic acid, for example. The salicylic acid in this is 0.2%. That's very low, but can still be effective for helping to break up the glue between stuck together skin cells and those flakes and allow for better cell turnover. Salicylic acid also exfoliates the pores and you have a lot of pores on your scalp. So using this on a regular basis, you may note an improvement in things like dandruff. Niacinamide is anti-inflammatory and it may portend benefit for the health of the hair follicle for that reason. The ingredient in this though that has a decent amount of, I'll say, compelling research for, we'll just say, helping to improve the health of the hair follicle is caffeine. We know that caffeine applied topically actually um, gets into the hair follicle pretty readily. It stays there um, and it almost has like a depot effect. And caffeine is an antioxidant, it's anti-inflammatory, and really does show promise for hair loss. Um, androgenetic alopecia, as well as telogen effluvium. This also has D-panthenol, which is good for the moisture barrier. It has tea tree extract. Now, tea tree oil actually shows promise for dandruff, psoriasis, um, acne, and as a ingredient in a shampoo, it makes some sense. It has anti-inflammatory properties. However, allergy to tea tree oil is relatively common. If you have an allergy to fragrance, you may cross react with tea tree oil. You know, it may have similar compounds in it. When we're talking about a product such as this, where you have tea tree extract, you're dealing with an ingredient that is more refined in a sense, more purified um, than say, just of course, going out and buying tea tree oil and putting it directly on the skin. So the risk around that ingredient is much lower in a product such as this than if you were just you know, trying to do some DIY with tea tree oil. Um, but one to point that out, it has soap bark extract in it, which is a sort of natural surfactant. But one thing about soap bark is it does create a really nice lather, which I imagine is why this distributes on the scalp so readily. Uh, this does have fragrance. So if you're allergic, this would not be for you. And it does have menthol, which is typically added to things to um, help with itch. Uh, because menthol can distract those little itch signals. Now menthol is also fragrance, so if you're allergic, you have to avoid menthol. Menthol kind of gives a little bit of a tingle as well, but it is a good ingredient if you're someone who deals with scalp itch. I think this shampoo is really great, not only for people who are just pursuing a shampoo for the purposes of scalp health, uh, scalp hygiene meets those needs, but if you have a dry scalp or a sensitive scalp, uh, I think this would be a good shampoo 
good choice for you uh, because it's it's pretty mild in terms of the surfactants. And like I said, it rinses out readily. As someone who lives somewhere with hard water, um, this shampoo has given me no issues. It leaves my hair soft, manageable, clean, but it doesn't leave any kind of residue buildup. It doesn't cause scalp irritation. I have been really happy with it. it smells like ginger beer. Um, so I enjoy that scent, but if you don't like ginger, then you may not care for the aroma. Number four, the Pyeongkang Yule Black Tea Time Reversal Eye Patches. This is another uh, K-Beauty Advent Calendar win. So if you've been following me for a while, you know I really enjoy doing hydrogel eye masks from time to time. I really like doing them. They um, help improve moisture in the skin around the eyes, temporarily smoothing out the look of fine lines. They're relaxing to do. They often can help temporarily depuff, especially if you store them in the refrigerator and apply them to the skin chilled. It definitely can help depuff. So they do have tea tree leaf extract in them. Again, um, maybe beneficial as an anti-inflammatory ingredient, but just be aware. These otherwise have no fragrance. Niacinamide, good for dark spots, redness, anti-inflammatory, good for the moisture barrier. Also has ceramides, which are good for um, applying to your skin to help with moisture barrier function and help with replenishing the barrier. These are lipids naturally found in skin's outermost layer, and they can you know, decline a bit with dry skin. Hyaluronic acid, good for moisture retention. They have palmitoyl tripeptide 1, which is part of Matrixol. Uh, so in theory, this peptide may help with the health of your collagen. This has adenosine and natural moisturizing factor, and it has dipotassium glycerizate, which comes from licorice, is an anti-inflammatory ingredient. Really like these overall because the ingredients are good when you apply them. Uh, and leave them on, they stay in place. They don't slide down your face, but they don't dry on their filmy. Now, people will always comment about the orientation of these. Um, some people insist that they need to be placed with the narrow tail in, closer to the inner canthus, whereas others insist that they, the wider aspect of these needs to be placed. Truthfully, it doesn't matter. Use them in whatever orientation you want. As a side note, anytime I use a hydrogel eye patch, it's almost a guarantee guaranteed built-in engagement factor because people are going to comment and tell me that I'm wearing them in the wrong orientation. Um, because I wore these in a lot of my TikTok videos and a lot of my shorts at the beginning of this year when I was going through them. And no matter which way I wore them, people would tell me that I was wearing them wrong. I'm here to tell you, wear them the way that you want. Either way is fine. Moving along to a body wash. Now, body wash, I'm really strategic with. People have a tendency to overuse body wash. It can leave a residue behind, really dry out the skin. Uh, body wash can be used on the underarm area and the skin folds, the chest, the back, and certain body washes are great for people who have acne prone skin. They have active ingredients in them that address um, acne. So this Sewn By Me Miracle Acne Clear Body Cleanser I discovered this year. And while I don't have chest and back body acne, um, I did find that using this body wash left my skin really nice and smooth. So I think it's also a great option. As a side note, if you have uh, rough and bumpy skin, keratosis pilaris on the upper chest, I think you would enjoy this. So it's got salicylic acid, which again, is, um, it's anti-inflammatory. It's an acne treatment. It exfoliates the pores and it helps control breakouts. It also has a mandelic acid, an alpha hydroxy acid that's very mild in terms of its exfoliating, but also can help with improving moisture retention. And it has lactobionic acid, a polyhydroxy acid, which um, likewise, super gentle in terms of exfoliating, but also helps with moisture retention. Um, this has compounds from centella. It has centella asiatica extract and matacasoside. Centella asiatica is a botanic um, for which there are a variety of ingredients that come from it, which are anti-inflammatory and antioxidants and show promise for healing. Heart leaf extract is another anti-inflammatory botanic extract in this. Um, now it does have tea tree extract in it, again. Uh, so the tea tree extract in this might be beneficial uh, for those of you who have acne or for those 
of you who have seborrheic dermatitis, which isn't just a scalp and facial issue, definitely can happen honestly anywhere where you have hair follicles, but it happens frequently on the body, like under the arms. If you have a deeper skin tone, the seborrheic dermatitis can take away the color in your skin temporarily. But uh, ingredients like salicylic acid can definitely help improve that. And there is some evidence that tea tree extract, tea tree oil at least, is beneficial for seborrheic dermatitis. Now this does have fragrance. If you're allergic, it's not a body wash you would want to use. It has limonene in it, and it also has eucalyptus oil in it, which is um, not only, you know, it's fragrance, it imparts an aroma, but it also has, I, I believe, some antimicrobial properties and some preservative uh, benefits for the formula overall. This product does smell like tea tree and eucalyptus. Um, th that would be the one thing about this I do not like, but it rinses off the skin really easily. It doesn't leave behind a residue. And I genuinely notice uh, an improvement in skin softness on the chest and back using this. And in theory, the tea tree extract, the eucalyptus, because of their antimicrobial properties, that may help cut down on bacteria under the arms that break down your sweat and lead to body odor. Number six, skin 1004, which someone commented recently, that means angel, which is great to learn. So their ProBio Sika Ampule. Oh my gosh. First of all, this ProBio Sika line from this brand, excellent. Like everything from this line is excellent. But if I were to tell you what is the standout product, it is their ampule. Uh, it is so hydrating. Again, very pleasurable to use. I really enjoyed the slippery, smooth texture. It's a lot like using snail mucin, not quite as stringy, slimy, but it's uh, it's got that slime appeal, which I actually really like. Um, it's hydrating. It has ceramide in it, which is good for skin's moisture barrier. It has panthenol, which also is good for dry skin. Allantoin is anti-inflammatory. The main sort of featured ingredient is the lactobacillus centella extract ferment. So fermented ingredients, fermentation, has the potential to enrich for some of the beneficial compounds. It also has the potential to make certain compounds in an ingredient more bioavailable or more active for your skin. Now, this is not true across the board of all fermented ingredients. There is a lot of variability out there. Um, so I can't really say for sure if the particular ferment in this really does all of those things. But what I can tell you is I do see a visible improvement in my skin using this product. I recently finished it up. It is definitely a 2023 favorite, especially in the realm of Korean products where you have so many great options for hydrating serums, toners, ampules. When I say I see a visible difference in my skin, I'm talking plump, smooth, um, and to the point where pore size becomes less obvious. Um, nothing makes pores more obvious than dry, dull, dehydrated skin. And so this particular product really does help with moisture retention, just smoothing out the skin surface. All right, and then the last two products are from my favorite category, sunscreen. So I have a Korean organic, aka chemical sunscreen favorite, and I have a Korean inorganic, aka mineral sunscreen favorite. So first up is the Pcom Water Barrier Sun Cream SPF 50 PA4+. I discovered this actually on Amazon. It has wonderful organic filters, organic active sunscreen ingredients for broad spectrum protection. It has Uvenol T150, Uvenol A+, Mexerol SX, and Tinosorb S. Now, all of those ingredients, not only are they good for, you know, giving good UV protection, but they also are such that the formulation overall can be a little bit more sophisticated. In comparison to, like, many U.S. sunscreens, the aesthetics of the formula are very pleasing for the consumer because there are only so many filters that are approved for use in sunscreens here in the U.S. So you'll find that once you get out of the U.S., the organic sunscreens become a lot more, not only cosmetically elegant, but in my experience, a lot less irritating, um, a lot less likely to sting, um, a lot less likely to irritate around the eye area. So in addition to the active ingredients for the sunscreen, this has uh, ceramide, it has maticasoside, which comes from centella and it's anti-inflammatory. It has uh, niacinamide, which is a great ingredient in sunscreens because it's an antioxidant, so it may help 
cut down on oxidative stress upon exposure, not only to UV, which the sunscreen ingredients help protect against to a certain extent, but also from exposure to other environmental aggressors like pollution. Uh, speaking of antioxidants, this also has glutathione, an antioxidant that shows promise for helping uh, ward off hyperpigmentation. Really love this formula overall. It's very hydrating, easy, and pleasurable to use. Again, doesn't burn or sting around the eyes. It's similar in consistency, feel, look, texture, appearance on the skin as the Isentree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel, which I think was a 2022 sunscreen favorite. So a great texture, a great base, free of fragrance, very hydrating. I also have a Korean inorganic, aka mineral sunscreen favorite, the Haru Haru Wonder Black Rice Pure Mineral Daily Sunscreen SPF 50 PA4+. The active ingredient here is zinc oxide. That's the active sunscreen ingredient, great ingredient for protecting against UVB and UVA. The cast on this is modest for an all mineral sunscreen. Uh, the formula is moisturizing, but it's not greasy. It's not shiny. It's a great base for makeup. It has um, hyaluronic acid, good for moisture retention. It has ceramide, a lipid naturally found in skin's outermost layer, important for barrier function. And it has rice bran oil and emollient that may have some anti-inflammatory compounds and antioxidants. Easy to tolerate around the eyes, as is the case for most mineral sunscreens. Uh, as I already said, it's a great base for makeup. You don't get any pilling. It's great if you have very sensitive skin. The texture overall, the consistency, make it a great option, not only for dry, and or sensitive skin, but also for oily, acne prone skin. I, th I think, you know, pretty much any skin type should get along well with this. That being said, you know, no one person's skin is exactly like another. So predicting these things is basically impossible to say for sure if it's gonna work out for you or not. But for me, this was a standout, best of 2023 Korean skincare product that I highly recommend checking out, especially if you like mineral sunscreens. All right, y'all, so those are the top eight Korean skincare products I discovered in 2023. It's actually kind of a hard video because there are a lot of other great products that I tried out this year and use and recommend frequently, but I tried to dial it down to like the absolute standout products. Let me know in the comments though, have you tried any of these or is there a Korean skincare product that you discovered this year that you want me to know about? Try out, let me know in the comments. I will definitely uh, try and look into that. But if you guys enjoyed this video, on the end slate, I'm actually going to link my best of 2023 skincare video where I share with you guys the best affordable, no-nonsense skincare basics I discovered this year. So you definitely are gonna wanna check that video out next. I have all of these in a playlist. And stay tuned, I plan to do more videos in this series of the best of 2023. But if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.